Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 10. Times have changed in the Valley with police responding to an increasing number of crime reports. In some instances, the victim winds up in a face-to-face -face showdown with the criminal. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkovitz talked to police and homeowners on the best way to protect your property and yourself. Michael Piercy lives right within the scene of Wednesday's crime, where police tasered a suspect who tried to steal someone else's bike. So I asked Piercy, what would he do if he saw one of his bikes being stolen? I'm going to run after him. What if they had a weapon? Would that deter you at all? or? Probably not much. I'm still going to follow him and pursue him until he stops and gives me my bike. But all the police I spoke with advised the opposite. Don't be a hero. I don't recommend them going after. Uh, the best thing that a person can do is if you ever see a crime that's occurring or you think that a crime has been occurring, is to call the police department. You never know what anybody is capable of. You don't know if they are armed or if they're willing to do anything towards you or if they're going to flee. But while police advise to stay back, they do want you to get a good look. To make sure you keep eyes on that person, get as much physical descriptions available that you possibly can to provide to dispatch to give the officer so they can look for that person. Being a good witness always helps the best for getting the best information to our officers so that we can try to help you. That might be good advice for Piercy, who says if he does pursue a thief, he'd at least keep his distance. He's not going to be that close where he can stab me. I've been stabbed in the liver twice before and I don't want to do it again. In downtown Fargo, Rose Liskovitz, Valley News Live. Police also tell us it's important to register your belongings with the city you live in and no serial numbers of bicycles and other expensive items that could be the target of a thief. The clouds and rain seem to be our thing since we'll be seeing more of both in the coming days. Hutch, what does it look like overnight? Well, we do have some showers of rain across Lakes Country. That's where the most focused and heaviest showers are, Otter Tail and Becker County primarily. On the backside, a lot of clouds and, in fact, even some fog. But first and foremost, out towards the Wadena area, some heavier showers between there and Purim along Highway 10. And a fog advisory has been posted for northeast North Dakota. Visibility in Grand Forks down to a quarter of a mile. That could be a problem as we go through the overnight hours. Most of the rain showers from the Red River uh, to points east overnight, although we could see more developing out to the west. Tomorrow looks like it could be another soggy day for some. I'll have the details in your hour-by-hour -hour forecast here in a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. And make sure you have the Valley News Live Storm Team weather app so that you can keep up with the weather anytime, anywhere. You'll get the latest forecasts and conditions so that you can plan your day. All you need to do is search VNL Weather in the App Store and download it for free. Viewers contacted our whistleblower hotline tonight to let us know that scammers might be trying to get at the information, your personal information. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley checked into this and has the latest. Bailey? That's right, Andrea. We've received several messages from viewers saying they've received calls from scammers pretending to be from the Social Security Administration. One viewer says the caller told her Social Security number was supposed, to, was supposed to be suspended because of suspicious or illegal activity. The woman told me that the scammers urged her to call them back with her personal information to clear that suspension. Of course, you should never give up your personal information like your Social Security number to anyone over the phone. I did some digging and called that number, but it's been disconnected. The Better Business Bureau says that you should never trust your caller ID, as many scammers can make it look like a trusted phone number is calling you. Mike, Andrea. All right, thank you, Bailey. If a scam like this happens to you, report it to our whistleblower hotline. Our team will get to work to figure it out. Still no word on the identity of a man that Moorhead police trying to find allegedly involved in a prescription medication thief uh, theft. The person pictured here was at the Walgreens store in Moorhead on September 17th. He may be driving a dark-colored new Jeep Renegade. Anyone with information on him is urged to call Moorhead Police. The phone number is on your screen right now, 218-299-5122. If you live in Holly, Minnesota, the city wants you to know about a planned power outage. Work on the Minn Kota electric transmission line is prompting that citywide outage. It'll start at 11 o'clock tonight and last for six hours, so that's until 5 tomorrow morning. The outage will allow crews to install a new tower east of town, and that will help increase the long-term reliability of power in town. We're learning more tonight about the makeup of those pipe bomb packages sent to prominent Democrats, critics of President Trump, and CNN. 
Investigators believe those potentially explosive devices were all sent through the mail, some possibly from Florida. New packages found today were addressed to actor Robert De Niro, a longtime Trump critic, and two were sent to former Vice President Joe Biden. Investigators say the devices are all similar to the ones sent to former President Obama, Hillary Clinton, and others. Plastic pipe with end caps like this. Inside was some kind of explosive powder and apparently little glass shards to act as shrapnel. As the investigation continues, those on both political sides continue to weigh in, pointing fingers at one another, while the perpetrator and the motive remain unknown. Now authorities are looking into whether some of the packages containing those pipe bombs were mailed from a U.S. postal facility in Florida. Investigators converged on a U.S. postal mail facility in Opalaka. That's a small city north of downtown Miami. Officials didn't elaborate on the reason they suspect this facility, but the return address listed on each one was that Florida office of the ex-chair of the Democratic National Committee, Debbie Wasserman Schultz. Investigators are looking into whether there could be any connections to the current investigation. We have a program note for you now. Valley News Live will be carrying tomorrow's U.S. Senate debate between Heidi Heitkamp and Kevin Kramer. Coverage is set to begin at 7. It's going to last an hour, so 7 to 8 p.m. on KX4. And a programming note regarding the uh, program that's being replaced. We'll be replaying the missed show MacGyver at 2.30 Saturday morning on the same channel. Does your car smell musty or funky or just plain bad no matter how many times you go to the car wash or how many air fresheners you buy? You are not alone. The experts at Consumer Reports reveal some easy ways to root out those pesky smells. Valley News Team's Lisa Badeau explains. The dog, the kids, maybe even the compost often mean a trip to the car wash. You know how milk get, tends to fester on and on? You don't want to give that impression that that, um, that you're not a very clean person. But sometimes that's just not enough to get rid of unpleasant smells once and for all. It can be really tough to figure out why a car smells so bad. There are lots of vents and crevices in a car where odors can hide and thrive. Mechanic Satoshi Fukunaga. The first thing I look at when a customer comes with a smelly car is look into the cabin filter. One obvious place to look and smell are the dashboard vents. If that area is the problem, see if there is debris like leaves in the cabin filter. Clear it out, and if that works, great. If not, installing a new cabin filter can really help. They're not very expensive, and you can probably do it yourself. You can also try spraying a professional grade vent and duct cleaner to get rid of any fungi that may have taken a foothold in a vent. Moisture in and under carpet mats can also cause odor problems. Carpet cleaners can help, but for tougher smells, you may need to get professional steam cleaning. And don't forget the sunroof. There are small drainage holes on the sides, which sometimes get clogged, allowing water to seep into the roof's liner or even drip onto the seats. A quick vacuum of that area can solve that problem. Lisa Badeau, Valley News Live. If none of these fixes work, you may need to uh, get to your mechanic to check for more serious problems with the climate system. Lots of costumes, fun, and candy at the 5th Annual Boo at NDSU event earlier this evening. It, the event offered a, a Halloween children's carnival at the Matthew Living Learning Center where kids could play games and do crafts and other Halloween activities. There was also trick-or-treating at certain residence halls across campus. Later on Valley News Live at 10, it's the happy birthday surprise that you have to see a kindergarten class's gift to their custodian that has moved many. Well, we have peaks of the sun today as it set and dipped below the clouds. You're looking at our time lapse from the FM area. It just looked like fire in the sky under the clouds. Now we shift cameras out to the Dakota Magic Casino. Can they too saw a gorgeous setting sun? More rain is in the forecast overnight and into tomorrow. Details are next.